everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan and this is my husband, Jim. And we're going to be talking to you today about some Bible truths. In fact, we're calling this program Bible 101 and this would be part four. Correct. And uh, in these programs, we've just been kind of given just some simple guidelines on how to understand about God because a lot of people have some confused notions about about who he is, you know. I've heard people say things like, um, you know, the accidental clause in an insurance policy would, would say an act of yeah. God. And it's always bad. And it's always bad. And we need to understand, we need to kick that out of our thinking because that's, no. that's not true. We need to understand that God is good. And, you know, we, we've got a favorite song that I have, God is good all the time. Yes. And Don Moen sings it, so y'all can download that, yeah. and you can hear it over and over. It's just really good. But he is good all the time. And so the, the uh, subject that we're going to address today is, what is God like? And okay. I've kind of already can told you, you. In other words, yeah, find out, find out what he's like. It's, you know, <clears throat> you, you hear all kinds of things, like you, just, like you mm -hmm. said a while ago. You know, well, well, God did this to me, or God did that to me. Well, it, is is that really true? Does, yeah, does God and you do know, see, like and see, Jim. A lot of people, even even like even Christian uh, church going people, will think that everything that happens in their life is God. Yes. When it's really sometimes it's simply a natural circumstance. It had nothing to do with yeah, God. You know, they'll say, they'll say, well, God allowed it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, well that, that's it. you know that's one of the <laughs> things. Well, God allowed it. Well, yes and no. Yeah. He didn't, you know, he, he gave you authority also. That's right. You know, in fact, that thing about authority is really a valuable. We need to teach on that sometime. Okay. The authority that you have. As a believer, a lot of times you're blaming God for things when actually you had authority okay. to, to, to stop it, so it right. or help it get right That's or right. something. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, there's, there's certain things that, or under our control. That's exactly right. But today we're not talking about that. Today we're talking about God's characteristics and what is He like. So we're going to start with uh, let's see. Let's start with He is holy. Okay. okay. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse two. Speak to all the congregation of Israel and say to them, "You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy." So God is holy. Right. And we need to make it clear, holiness is not contagious. No. You know, you can't just be around somebody else that you think is holy and think, well, I'm going to just, you know, kind of let their holiness exude. And it's not going to happen. It says that it, this is not like that. So what, what, do you, what is holy? What does that mean to you? Holy Jim? means it's, it's, it's totally sin-free, mm -hmm. spotless. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and so that's only available through one person I know of. That would be correct. That would be the Jesus. sinless blood of the Lamb. You've got to be hooked up to Jesus Christ to be holy. Yes. There's and no he, other he way. Said, he said here, be holy for I'm holy. Mm -hmm. That's right. You've got and we to. can only be holy because he is, mm -hmm. not on our own. In mm -hmm. other words, you know, that's like trying to work your way into heaven. You can't do it. You, you, you cannot work your way to heaven. Everybody, I like to tell people this, everybody in the kingdom of God is equal mm -hmm. because we all got in the same way. Yeah, that's true. We all got in by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So mm -hmm. once we get in, we're all equal. Now, we may have all, we all have different jobs. We mm -hmm. all have different responsibilities. Yeah. But that doesn't make you any more important than me. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make me any more important than you. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm the preacher of the church, so I'm the most important. No, you're not. What about the, the person that's keeping the babies in the nursery? Oh, man, you can't preach if they're not doing they're that. Just, they're, they're just as important as you are. What yeah. about the person that's standing at the door greeting? Well, they're just as important. Absolutely. We're all equal. Yeah. Everybody has a job to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so. What the first characteristic is God, God is, is holy. holy. Okay. Second one is he is righteous. Okay. And I really like this one. Okay. 
It's in John chapter 17, verse 25. It says, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And these would be the words of Jesus. He's righteous. He's righteous. He's righteous. And see, what, what is good for us is the Bible declares that when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, that we are made the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, righteous doesn't mean holy. No. Righteous simply means you are in right standing. standing. There's only one way you can get in right standing with God, and it's not reading your Bible every day. It's not praying every day. What about going to church? It's not going to church, although you ought to go to church. What about you giving to, to the your, poor? You ought to read your Bible every day. You ought to pray every day. What about giving to the poor? Will that you, do you it? You ought to give to the poor, but that's not what that's, that's not going to do it either. That's not going to do it. What, what's going to do it? It's going to have to be your relationship with Jesus. Receiving Jesus yeah. Christ as your Savior. That's right. So maybe we just need to stop here because we've talked about two things already. Okay about God that you can't even know about, really, if you haven't if you experienced right. yes. Jesus Christ in your life. And so we want to talk to you about being born again. In one, one reference, it's talked about as being translated out of darkness into light. Yes. And there's nothing more extreme than the opposite of light and dark. Okay, when you ask Jesus into your life, that means you've been moved out of darkness into light. Boy, that is so good. That, yes. The Bible, well, you know, and it says, the, the Bible says about itself, it is a lamp unto our feet and a light, light unto, unto our, our path. In other words, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, will direct us That's right. where to go. That's right. And I know that there's also a reference about Jesus is the light of the world. Yes. And so anyway, we just want to pray in case that you're watching today and maybe you've never... Maybe you've never actually acted upon the scriptures that talk about how necessary it is for you to be born again. And I know that if you if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, those you'll you'll find in there. I don't even remember even which one, but there was a man that came to Jesus one night. His name was Nicodemus. He was an important man in the town, and he was talking to him. He says, "How is it that a man can be born again? He could not." You can't understand that with your natural mind because you can't be like birthed again. And so he even asked Jesus, he said, look, he said, I don't know how I could crawl back into my mother's womb. And Jesus said, well, look, he said, I'm not talking to you about natural things. He said, I'm talking to you about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. He was talking about having a whole new nature. And that's what happens when you get born again. You get rid of this sinful nature and you take on the nature of God. So right now, wherever you are, I just want you to pray with me and you be the prayer okay, or the prayee and say, Dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I heard today. I heard today. Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. So today. So today. I'm asking him to come into my life. I'm asking him to come into my life. To make me this new person. Make me this new person. I want to be, I want to have the light of the world in me. I want to have the light of the world in me. I want to know you. I want to know you. And so right now. So right now. I'm just going to say. I'm just going to say. I believe. I believe. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. He is the son of the living God. And so now that you've said that, what happens, Jim? Born again. Born a again. Member, a member of God's family. That's right. And we just happen to have something here that we would, if you prayed that prayer with Susan just now, we would like, we have a book. It's called 31 Days of Faith. And the reason being is faith is the most critical issue, issue in, in your life. life. The, the most critical mm -hmm. issue in your life is faith. The Bible says, tells us in Romans, and I believe it's in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, that God has dealt to every man or woman mm -hmm. the measure of, of faith. faith. So you have faith. Now that you're born again, you have faith. Now what you've got to do is grow your faith. Absolutely. Grow your mm -hmm. faith. And, and the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This will help get you started. It sure will. It will help get you started. So if you will contact us here, you call us, write us, email us, and send it to you. leave a message Absolutely on the phone. Free. Yeah, just leave a message with your That's name right. and address, and we'll send Absolutely it to you. Absolutely free. It won't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's right. right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so 
now that we 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 have people watching that are on the same page with us, right. it's real easy to talk about who God, what He's like. Yes. He is love. He is love. That's right. Okay, and this one <clears throat> is First uh, John four eight. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Isn't that good? And you know this this little scripture, God is love. That's one of the very first ones that we teach, you know, in church to our little two and three year olds. God is love. You know, God is love. We want them to grow up understanding that God is is love. Yes, he is. You know, he's he's good. He's love. God is love. And he loves us with an everlasting love. That's right. He will never stop. You know, it's just like your children. They may do things that you know make you mad, whatever. But they're still your children, and you still love them. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, Jim, I remember years ago there was um, a little—I don't remember, maybe a poem—about what I always needed to know. I learned in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And you know, when whenever we talk about these little basic Bible 101 truths, that's what I think about. It's because, like, God is love. That's one of the very first things you learn when you're a toddler in Sunday school. The very first song those little toddlers sing is, Jesus loves me, this I know. You know, and that is, that is just so, such a cornerstone that must be in place in your life. You just need to understand, no matter what anybody says to you, and, and people are going to say, well, God caused this to happen to me. You just say, no, God is love. God is love. God right. is love. You, know, you stop and think about this. Uh, uh, would you do something like that to one of your children? Mm -mm. The answer is no. Absolutely not. Well, why do we think God would be any different? I don't know, but people get all mixed up about stuff. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay. But God is love. And here's another one. I love this next one. I love it. Why don't you do it? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful, yeah. by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful. Mm-hmm. That means you can count on him. So he, he never changes. Now, you, we, we have to, to, to be careful here. And when it says God is faithful, just exactly what does that mean? What does that mean? What is God faithful to? Okay. Well, see, I know. I know you know. <laughs> so, but, but we have, we have, to, be, we have to be careful because God is faithful. That's true. But he's faithful to his word. That's right. He will never change it. Mm hmm the Bible says he watches over his word to perform. to perform it. And so, you know, God is faithful, and that's what he's faithful to, is his word. So, you know, you, you stop and think about this. God is faithful to his word. In other words, if you find a promise mm -hmm. in the Bible, okay, and you exercise faith, you believe it. Mm -hmm. Well, God is faithful to cause that to come to fruition in your life. Mm -hmm. that's God right. is faithful. To accomplish that in your life, mm -hmm. absolutely, always, he always. Is. He God is faithful. Is faithful. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. That is, is very I good. Yep. I love that about him. That's probably one of your favorite ones. Yes. Okay, I like this one. He is everlasting. Okay. okay this is Genesis chapter twenty-one, verse thirty-three. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting. God. That means forever. That means forever. You know, some of your friends will abandon you. <clears throat> Even some of your family members will just say, goodbye, honey. But God is everlasting. Yes, he, is. he He's always there. You know, you won't ever you won't ever call on him and get a message. Well, I'm sorry, your message is important to me, but I'm away. No, no, God is everlasting, yes. always attentive. Always there. Always. Always. That's right. Everlasting. Yes. Uh, all right, let's do another here. I, I, I'm going to do this. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 5. I love this. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 5. It says, And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. God is a covenant keeping, keeping God. Mm hmm. Isn't that good? That's right. We have a covenant. Yeah, and you know, you know, God. it's so interesting to read, you know, all the blessings of the covenant in Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. 
But even even before that, you can go back and you can look at, at the things that God spoke when he spoke to his friend Abraham. Yes. You know, and, and he told him all the things he was gonna do. And he told him even one place he said, Hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be your uh, what was it, your Exceeding great reward. Exceeding great reward. Which really means ever increasing money, money supply. supply. Yeah, God cares about things like that yes, in your he life. Yes, he, he is does. a covenant keeping God. Yeah, covenant keeping. See, the interesting thing about it, like, for instance, our, you and I are married and we have a covenant. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, what we said when we got married was what's yours is mine and what's mine is yours. That's right. That's pretty much the way it is. Mm -hmm. Right? That is right. And so, it's the same way with God. We have a covenant with God. And here's to the good news. Yeah. Whatever is mine is his. Well, he didn't he didn't get very much. No, but but whatever is his is, is mine. mine. And yeah. he has everything. That's right. Boy, that is some good promise there. Mm -hmm. And he is a covenant keeping God. Mm -hmm. That's, that reminds me of the uh the, the, the prodigal son that's found in, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 11. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, you know, the younger son comes to the father and he says, well, give me what's, what's coming to me. So the father gave it to him. Mm -hmm. well, you know, the Bible says, of course, he went out and he, he wasted it yep. with prodigal living. We don't yep. know exactly what that is, but it, it didn't sound good. No, well, and so yeah. one day he came to his senses. Okay, he mm -hmm. came to his senses and he said, wow. He said, even the people that work for my daddy are better off than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and just and see if he will give me a job. Well, the father sees him coming. And so he said, go get the, the, uh, the calf and, and cook it. And the robe. Bring a robe and, a, and shoes. Bring, a, bring shoes ring. and a ring and put, and put it on him. He said, you know, and so... The older son hears all the commotion going on. So he asked him, I said, well, what's, what's the deal? What's going on here? And they said, well, your brother's back. He said, you know, your father thought he was dead, but he's back. Mm -hmm. And so he wouldn't even go in. He wasn't happy about it. So the father came out. And so the older son said, well, what's the deal here? What's right about this? He went off and he wasted all of your stuff. And, and now here you are throwing him a party. He said, you never threw me a party. That's right. Now listen to this. Listen to what the father said. Mm -hmm. The father said, son, everything I have is yours. Mm -hmm. You could have had a party any time you wanted. Mm -hmm. And folks, listen to me. We have a covenant with Almighty God. And, and listen, he will never, never, never abandon the covenant. I'm reminded yeah. of, uh, of uh, Jonathan and David uh, talking about covenant. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan and David, they loved one another. And now Jonathan was the rightful heir to the throne, Saul's mm -hmm. son. But Jonathan knew that David was going to be the king. Right. So he went to David and he said, look, he said, let's cut a covenant together. That if, if, if one of us should die, the other one will take the other one's children mm -hmm. and raise them as their own. Right. So we know what happened. We know that Jonathan died. Mm -hmm. And so after several years, David said to one of his men, Is there not anyone left of Saul's household who I may show covenant kindness to? Wow. Now, that's not yeah. what the Bible says, but if you go in and, that's what and he's you, talking you look about. up the word, it means covenant kindness. kindness. Wow. So the, the servant said, Well, there's a son of, of Jonathan. His name is Mephibosheth, and he's lame in his feet. In other words, he, he couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. So David <clears> said, Well, go get him. Well, you have to understand where we are here. Probably Mephibosheth, all he ever heard was, was David has stolen the throne from your father, exactly. Jonathan. I'm sure that's what it he heard. It should have been your father's, and it should have been yours, and, and, and this, that, and it's David's fault. It's David's fault your father's dead, and this, that, and the other. So you can imagine when these soldiers come up to where he is. Yeah. What, what are the thoughts going through his head? He well, thinks his life is over. Yeah. Him, so they get him, they take him, they clean him up, they bring him to David. And, and, and so here he is. He's thinking, don't, don't you know that on the inside of him, he's just thinking every evil thought he can towards mm -hmm. David. And David said this. He said, Mephibosheth, he said, I'm restoring to you everything that was your grandfather Saul's. I'm restoring it to you today. Mm -hmm. And 
then he said, and not only that, from now on, from now on, you will eat at my table. table. Yeah. Now, did Mephibosheth deserve that? He, d he had done absolutely nothing to deserve that. Nothing. But because okay. of covenant, mm -hmm. because of covenant that his father had done, it was all his. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I have a covenant. We are in the covenant. God made a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. And because you and I are in him, then we are heirs of that covenant. And everything that God has has been made available to us as believers. Mm -hmm. Man, that is really good. So I just, he's a covenant keeping, keeping God. God. Wow. Mm hmm. Yep, I was going to say something, but it left me. Okay. I don't remember what it was. Okay, so do you want to go to the next one? Go ahead. Okay, why don't we talk about the one he is hope. We're talking about what the characteristics of God really and truly are. Okay. Okay, he is hope. All right, this one is in Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that good? So he gives you hope. Yeah. I know there's a, a message translation to not this verse, but one very similar to this. It talks about how I pitched my tent in the land of hope. Yes. You know, you have something to do with this hope. You, you, it's almost, you choose this hope. That's who he is. But this hope can be in your life, your everyday Christian life, and every single moment, if you choose That's right. to be there. That's right. You know, the, uh, see, our hope, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you don't have hope, <clears> now, <throat> hope is not wishing and hoping. Right. Hope is the expectation of good. Mm -hmm. And so the, the Bible says, says that this faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have this hope for our faith to work. Right. You know, years ago, we, there was a hymn that we used to sing about, my, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Yes. And you know, that, that is the hope of an individual. That's the hope of a country to, to be built on, an, on such premises as Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Right. So the God of hope, he refers to himself as the God of hope. That's right. You know, that goes back to Jeremiah 29, 11, where he says, I know the plans I have for you, says Lord, plans to, to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. If you are born again, if you are born again, God has a plan for your life. And it's a plan for good. And not evil. It's a plan for good and not evil. And, and, and he is doing everything that he can to fulfill his plan mm -hmm. for your life. But you have to, to, to be willing, to be willing to fulfill that plan. Mm -hmm. You know, God's called every one of us. That's right. God's called everyone. The Bible says before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. And so he's called us. He has a plan for you. And you need to have hope that he has a plan for you. And ask, ask mm -hmm. God to reveal that plan to you because, you know, there was a, a, a man, his name was Demas Shakarian, mm -hmm. and uh, he was the founder of an organization called Full Gospel Businessmen's right. Fellowship. He wrote a book one time, and the title of the book are The Happiest People on Earth. And he, he, the, what it boiled down to was the, the happiest people on earth are those who have found God's plan for their life, and they're doing it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. You would just have a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. And you know, I... Another one we have to talk about when you talk about the God of hope is, is in Psalm 27. Yes. I would have despaired if I hadn't believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Absolutely. So, oh, you know, yes. today, it's not a day to be hopeless. This is a day to be hopeful. And so you just need to plant your feet on the solid rock, Jesus Christ himself, and, and just... You know, today, if you're, if you're watching, you're feeling that hopelessness, you just need to cast it off and say, nope, my hope is in God. He is the God of hope, and I'm going to place my 
trust in him and he will see me through and he will he, he, he will do it will. he will he will show you the way will. maybe maybe you're watching today and you're sick in your body i want to pray for you right now i believe that god is a is a, is a healing god mm -hmm. so we're going to play it it doesn't matter what what the problem is it, it simply doesn't matter nothing's too big for god no it's true father i come in the name of jesus and I speak healing to, to those that are in need of healing today. Father, what, whatever it is, I command healing in their body. Healing in their body. And we thank you for it, sir, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. If you were healed in your body, we'd like to hear from you. Mm -hmm. You can write us here or call us. We'd love to hear what God did in your That's life right. today. That's right. Amen. That's good. He is, but he is the God of hope. Hope. Yep. yep. God of hope. He is. He, he, will, he will give us a hope. Mm -hmm. He will. He's also the God of peace. Yes. Okay, now when you think of peace, you need to think of soundness. Nothing missing, everything intact and right. whole. Okay, the God of peace be with you all. That's in Romans 15, 33. So we need to understand that. You know, we're talking to you today about who this person God, what is he like? There's nothing bad. It's all good. No, there is nothing bad. I mean, when you talk about hope and you talk about peace and you talk about how he's merciful and almighty and everlasting, and I, I'm telling you, he's just good. That's right. He's just good all the time. I hope this is encouraging to you like it is to me. Amen. It's always right. good to go back over these it's things. Like, don't forget the book. If you prayed the sinner's prayer with Susan today, don't forget to contact us, and we will send you this book, 31 Days of Faith, absolutely free of charge. It won't cost you a penny. And if you just want the book, you can have it. You can have it. That's right. Even if you didn't pray the prayer. Susan, I will thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, mm -hmm. contact us here at the bottom line. And we are truly thankful for your continued financial support and for your loyalty and just watching us each week. And remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and, and the, the truth, truth will set, set you free. free.